scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Yeah. That's how habits are broken. That's how chains are broken. That's how impartations happen. It's not just by laying on of hands. How many people can you lay your hands on? Let the glory come and there is transformation. Let the glory come and something is happening in people. Let the glory come and testimonies, sicknesses. Many of you are sitting down right now and sicknesses will just disappear. No, it can't stand the glory. Prayer lives have been revived. Different dimensions of the spirit. That's why the place is called koinonia it's not a place of discussion it's an atmosphere of encounter Lord, let nothing restrain your hand in the midst of your people. Let nothing restrain your hand. Don't rob God from finding a vessel in you. Don't rob God from finding a truly anointed vessel in you. See, let me tell you something. If you follow these rubbish people are doing of just visiting God's presence to come and receive breakthrough and prosperity and power and rush back, you will never find God that way. Please believe me when I tell you this. God is not an object you use. You see that? There are some of us, our gifts are dormant for a very long time. Very long time. That press in the spirit to activate you listen it's an anomaly when you remain in the same spiritual level for a very long time something is wrong and when you are rising it's obvious everybody knows that there is a transition some of us are in the same position for a very long time because we are giving God barely enough see that there are some of us our dreams have ceased our visions have ceased. Our encounters have ceased. Our passion for his glory has ceased. Listen, every time the experience you used to have with God ceases, something stopped it. It never stops by default. Are we together now? There are many of us, you used to see things before they happen. Right now, it has dried up out of nothing because you are trying to look for a wife or look for a husband. Hallelujah. Dry up. There's nothing there again. No power. No grace. All these things we keep making noise around within church. One person falls down. One person falls down and we jump around. That's nonsense. There are higher dimensions. There are superior levels in the spirit. Beyond calling names and phone numbers. 
there is the spirit not the gift of prophecy there is the very spirit of it the very oppression of the prophetic realm where people receive testimonies of jesus without you speaking any message the spirit of prophecy men live with encounters they cannot explain no matter how hardened you are when you come into this atmosphere something must surrender that's what happens when his presence comes you cannot change men by the excellency of persuasions no it doesn't work that way the presence that's what brings transformation the presence that's what brings change there's nothing mysterious about it it's only a price that very few desire to pay because we like things cheap we like things easy anything that commits us we do not want we want results but we hate process oh we want to be mightily used you want to stand and see the glory of god move around brother there is a price it's not a gift it's a reward it's a reward for diligence it's a reward for surrender is a reward for total yieldedness i used to hear benny Hinn say it total yieldedness that's the price for the anointing total yieldedness not half-hearted yieldedness how many musicians are here you have not brought one song from the spirit it's, it's, a, it's an indictment on your call it's an indictment of on your gift there are melodies in the spirit like waves but there is a frequency with which your spirit must rise to and then you will capture these things the the level of the sophistication of your spirit is the level to which you will capture many of us our prayer lives have died gone cold gone cold gone cold you only pray until you feel tired see let me tell you why many of us our prayer lives are not effective we are only praying to justify prayer you don't pray for the purpose of touching realities in the spirit you see that yes at, you can pray and then after one hour or two hours you can say i have tried that's a different you are only praying to be better than somebody else but there is a way you come with a desperation and you pray that your spirit will make contact if that contact happens in 10 minutes you end if that contact happens in five hours you continue see it's not about religion but it starts with a desperation a desperation a desire the first message the Lord is communicating tonight is let there be a revival in your spirit man get back those mantles and those gifts wherever you threw them let those dreams come alive again because in those dreams are the puzzles of your destiny a little here a little there before the year runs out we're going to take a teaching on angels and the ministry of angels you see many of us have lost touch with spiritual reality it's dangerous in this time and age to just move sensually that the limit of your perception is a three-dimensional realm you will be a victim of too many things You've got to access a frequency that is higher than the material realm to supply you the strength and the illumination. Hallelujah. I challenge everyone here. There is more that God can do with your life if you will give him space. God is not a boyfriend. He's not a girlfriend. He's not looking for an affair. He wants a relationship. A very serious one. You give God an affair, you will get nothing out of it. If God is one of the many important things in your life, believe me, you will never find him. Believe me, you will never find him. Listen, listen. This desire is not for men of God. This desire is for everyone who wants God. Don't you think that this bias is for pastors? No, no. The spirit of man was designed to only find satisfaction in his presence. Nothing in this world will satisfy. Oh Jesus, you're the cup 
This is Koinonia. God bless you especially for our visitors and many who are coming for the first time. The Lord will bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Now today our meeting will be very different. We are going to take, I'll respond to a few questions and answers. Praise the Lord. The Holy Spirit put it in my heart. There are so many of us that have questions about the Holy Spirit, about encounters, spiritual growth. Who give us an opportunity, maybe 30 minutes. And then I'll just minister to people. There are people who need to be ministered to. And so that's what we're going to do. Help us with another mic, please. Um, now I know that, please listen, many of us have questions, especially as regards intimacy, encounters, our spiritual lives. I'm trusting that God will grant grace. We'll use all the questions as a message and just communicate it and please i want you to feel free make sure that you ask questions that are applicable to our spiritual growth not just something that is a bias for some of us is something regards prayer your prayer life um your word life if there's no mic you can i can take one and then you can use this hallelujah so um because it's not only important to teach there are some of us who have encountered certain challenges maybe in the dispensing of the gift of the spirit in our lives or anything that has to do with the holy spirit and intimacy and our spiritual growth and i'm trusting that god will grant us um a few minutes that's deliverance happening to her something is leaving her that devil of darkness leave her right now the name of Jesus Christ. There's one other lady with this same situation right now in this place. The power of God is coming upon her. This is a spirit that has been tormenting her. Lord, wherever that lady is right now, I declare deliverance by the power of the Holy Spirit. That lady is in the congregation here in the name of Jesus Christ. It's like fire that will come upon you. I judge that spirit. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Right now, I decree judgment. I pass a note of judgment to that wicked spirit that is bringing oppression. Praise the Lord. So, we are going to have a little Q&A and I will respond. And maybe uh, on one or two occasions, we can allow one or two people to respond. The questions will bless many of us because it will answer, it will attempt to answer or solve some of the puzzles that are around our lives i don't want our spiritual lives to be um, without accuracy some of us may have been making the same mistake for a long time that's why we are not getting certain results spiritually hallelujah some of us may be pressing into god for instance there are people who press into god but necessarily they find out that they are always backsliding not that they are sleeping around or doing anything immoral but that staying power 
it's like there is a spiritual meter every time you get to a dimension it pulls you back you are making progress but the graph is not straight it's like it goes up forces you down then you have to pray and fast your way there are many of us who do not know how to command strength in the spirit like a gentleman who uh, I think someone sent me a text I don't know if he's here he sent me a text in the afternoon um, and he said every time he's in the presence of God or anytime he's talking to people about the glory of God he starts yawning mysteriously like yawning and um, some of you are already nodding in agreement it's happening to me too what is the meaning of that <laughs> are you yawning out demons are you absorbing the glory what exactly is happening so um, please be smart don't be rude to the protocol people just walk as they direct you we're going to have a few questions um, I will use the questions some of the questions will actually culminate to teachings and I'll use the opportunity and just address things don't be biased make sure that you ask things that are relevant if your question is not relevant to our meeting we'll ignore it is that all right let's pray in one minute and say father speak to me go ahead and pray thank you jesus hallelujah praise the lord okay so um we'll come in threes we'll just have the first three they will stand and then if there's any need so let me see by wave of hands i'll point people out okay number one you can stand up come second number two and then um let's have a lady figure all right that lady waving her hands in blue come quickly appreciate them as they come be smart tell us your name straight to the point if you're wasting our time please we'll, we'll send you to your seats let me tell you in advance so you are not embarrassed go ahead turn to the congregation god bless you go ahead okay good evening sir is it working yes sir um good evening sir thank you yes, bless sir. you yes sir my question is um about visions visions yes sir what, what are they visions okay yes sir what are they and are visions a sign of spiritual growth that's um like spiritual visions are they limited to a particular set of people people who do not have them as frequently as are they growing? yes are they is it a sign that they are growing okay i, I want to visions are a dimension of supernatural encounters right um there are many levels dimensions and types of supernatural encounters visions are just um, a dimension of supernatural encounters that affords a person an opportunity to access realities in the spirit it could be realities that reveal the past the present or the future you understand it could also be realities that expose that person to um, spiritual happenings now the whole goal of visions and, and i want us to pay attention the whole goal of visions and encounters any supernatural encounter is prophetic in its dimension are we together now so every time we talk of prophecy it's not just speaking any encounter that exposes you to access any realm beyond the physical is a prophetic dimension so in every man there is a prophetic dimension let me call it a latent prophetic dimension now those who are called into the prophetic or apostolic office the advantage of the apostolic office is that on the strength of that office you can walk you should walk in all the fivefold offices because it's an administrative office it heads and coordinates the spiritual activities are we together now but in a typical prophetic office by default the moment you there is an election of grace upon you inclined towards that prophetic office there are it's like spiritual configurations by default are we together now now your spiritual life and your spiritual growth can add to it but anybody called into the prophetic office or any dimension of prophetic operations by default can be open to the realm of the spirit that's why you can find people seeing visions who are not born again are we together now remember he told jeremiah the prophet he said while you were in your mother's womb i had already called you and ordained you to be a prophet 
Are, are we clear now? So visions and generally all supernatural encounters are a dimension of the prophetic. And the goal of visions, dreams, is illumination and direction. Sometimes also impartation. It gives you illumination, access to light and information. Right? Sometimes it gives you direction. But in many cases, it also comes with impartation. That's why some of us can have dreams, have visions, encounters. We don't exactly know why they came, but they leave residues of impartations. As we get up and begin our normal life, we see that certain possibilities in the spirit has been activated. And we may not know at what point it was activated. Like wisdom, like certain virtues. Do you understand? So now, but that does not mean, listen, if you are truly growing spiritually, right? Even if you are not called into the prophetic dimension or prophetic realm, if you are growing spiritually, the, the presence of God has a prophetic effect on everyone, whether you are a prophet or not. This is the reason why somebody on the strength of sheer intimacy with the Holy Spirit can access a level that will make him look like a prophet. But in reality, he's not a prophet. He's just one who has pressed into God to an appreciable dimension. It's like an aura of God's presence. Now, the Bible does not use visions and dreams to qualify spiritual growth. Although experience has shown us that as you progress spiritually, you will begin to um, get impulses. It's called spiritual perception. In fact, I preached a message on that. You can get it with the media after the service. Are we, are we understanding now? Because there are some of us here who are praying, we love God, but aside from dreams and maybe what we call intuition, what people like Kenneth Hagin will call the knowing of the spirit, we've not had any supernatural encounter as it were. And sometimes we get intimidated. And I think I must correct that. Because some of us get intimidated because someone is now talking and saying... Um, um, Ogashewu saw something and he's prophesying and he's saying, oh, I saw something and you, you are standing frustrated that you do not have visionary encounters in terms of um, encounters, you are awake, you are alive and you are caught up or a picture comes before you or the audible voice of God or some kind of supernatural encounters. It does not mean you are not growing spiritually. Are we together now? There are two spiritual indices to measure spiritual growth. Number one is your degree of conformity into the image of the Christ. That's the first biblical sign of spiritual growth. So if you are born again and there is no transformation in you, you are not conforming to the image of Christ, believe me, your salvation is questionable. In fact, let me, let me press on this before we continue. There are many people who think they are born again. And, and please, I don't want you to doubt your salvation, but I must be sincere with you. There are many people who think they are born again. And I tell you the truth by the Lord, they are not. They are not saved. The meaning of that is if they die today, they are going to hell. Are we together now? Please, don't, don't trivialize salvation. Salvation is the, is the supplanting of the very life of God in a mortal man. Are we together? The Bible says you are born of the incorruptible seed. Remember? Of the word of God. So there is a seed. The same way a man plants a seed in his wife. What do you expect that seed to do? There should be fertilization. Is that true? And eventually, as time progresses, that seed, right, begins to produce. So you cannot tell me you are born again. Listen, that you are born again. The life of Christ is in you. And you are exposed to the atmosphere of the spirit. And progressively, we do not see, after a prolonged period of time, evidences of conformity to the image of Christ. Something is wrong with that salvation. Are we together now? So it's very, very important. So that's one index. The second index is your degree of comprehension. The degree to which you are having understanding on the principles and the mysteries of the kingdom. So that your degree of conformity, to what degree do I see Christ in you? In fact, Paul puts it this way. He said, my little children of whom I travail until Christ be formed in you. He was talking to people who were already saved. So conformity to the image of Christ and access to the principles and the mysteries of the kingdom. 
these two will naturally produce empowerment impartation access to the anointing are we together now so that's it about vision god bless you yes sir i appreciate you sir sir i want to know uh, what's your name my name is oko sampoten okay yes when um you there is a signal that an attack is coming on your spiritual life and you you pray against it but then actually you are going down spiritually sorry again you're going down spiritually your spiritual life you are going down spiritually yeah kind of you have an attack is coming on your spiritual life and then you attack from hell construct your question pray, very logical so that pray, prayer life, life for instance is your going down life is going down yes and then you you pray you pray against it then a time comes that what the very incidents that causes you to go down finally happens although you prayed against it and it, it happens to um you you feel that okay you failed and then the spirit comes to um encourage you that as if it's it, it is it was proposed by god okay so what is the question so now? my question now is uh, when are, are those attacks actually and after the attack you grow higher are those attacks actually um ingredients to for you to grow spiritually to live you the level it, you are you mean a demonic attack uh, on your spiritual life for instance okay um his, his question has many sides to it i'm not getting exactly what he's asking but if i understand you well you mean your prayer life is going down yes are we together yes and then what happens there is a there, there is even a, there is a knowing in you that there, there that, is an attack yes a demonic attack on yes, your life yes okay and then for instance there is a, maybe a habit god has delivered you from and then there is a knowing that um, it's coming back or something. The devil wants to bring and it you back. Pray, yeah. And you pray against it. Let it not be. Let it not be and Lord. Then it still and then it happens. Okay. Then you feel like it's man. It's gone. Then there is an encouragement that as if this thing is proposed. And then after that, you feel a lifting higher. Okay. I think I get what you're saying. No, 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 no. It's not a habit. It's not proposed to lift you up spiritually. What you see is an interplay of your carelessness and the mercy of God and the grace of God. There are many things interwoven. So you don't justify that because you grew from it. It meant God brought it. Now, we must understand that there are different attributes of God that um, it is part of the love of God. Now, love in the spirit is not affection. Love in the spirit is a realm with many dimensions. There is a dimension of love called discipline. There is a dimension of love called judgment. There is a dimension of love called mercy. There is a dimension of love called justice. Are we together? That's why Paul says to know the length, the breadth, and he, he gives love a dimension. So when we say the love of God comes to you, it can come as his goodness. It can, can come as his chastisement. Are we together? It can come as his mercy. Now you are a believer. Number one, we have to examine what made your prayer life to go down. Right? There are two reasons why your prayer life can go down. Number one, it can be the natural fatigue that comes from the spirit and the flesh contending together according to galatians chapter 5 verse 16 it says this i say then walk ye in the spirit and you shall not gratify the desires of the flesh right so it says the flesh lusted after the spirit the spirit after the flesh and there is a contention you get up in the morning i mean there are ladies to resist there is beer to cast away there, there are all kinds of things to happen there is bribery and corruption to run away from at the end of it after a while it's like it's like wear and tear your spirit can be fatigued that's not backsliding that's simply a tiring because of your faculties that help you interact with the spirit at that point the solution is a retreat isaiah 40 verse 31 even the young men can be weary they can faint all right then but they that wait upon the lord but in a situation where it is an attack which often happens there are three seasons where satan attacks people number one at the birthing of something new the moment there is something new about to happen in your life part of the many events that happen is a strange attack that has nothing to do with your spiritual life you read the bible and you find out it's not unusual right very very important there is always a strange attack revelations i saw a mystery a woman who was carrying a man child about to give birth to that child and a dragon came and stood waiting for the child to come so that she will 
eat. Now, Satan tries to stop you at the time of sowing your seeds. Any kind of seed, spiritual seed. If he cannot stop it, he will try to stop the gestation period by bringing impatience, taking advantage of your human nature. That hope deferred makes the heart weary. Are we together now? And if he cannot stop it, then he will wait for you at the point of harvest so that he will abort the harvest. These are the three seasons and stages of Satan's attack. So before you start ministry, look at that. He did it to Moses. Stage one, when Moses was about to be birthed and conceived, they wanted to kill all the people. So to abort the destiny from day one. Now that it did not happen, he wanted to implicate Moses and he caused Moses to kill somebody so that it will affect him, the process. And then eventually towards the end of his life, he used anger and stopped him from entering. So there are three stages of Satan's attack. Are we together? We see that even in the life of Jesus. Jesus about to be born, his star shines in the east. Wise men follow him, Herod wants to kill him. Are we together? Then later on again, we see that through the process, after his baptism, Satan comes to wait for him. And then he tries to jeopardize his destiny by telling him, I'll give you the kingdom, bow down. And since he refused, and then he tried and tried and tried, all through the lifetime of Jesus, Satan could not get him. And then the last stage was in hell. When Jesus was preparing to defeat all the cohorts of hell and come out, all the demons and the principalities were on him to force him to bow. And then he rose up and you know that when Jesus was about to resurrect, what happened? They paid some people to lie. Even when he resurrected, he, they guarded the place and when he resurrected, they paid some people, they said, go and lie. That the disciples came and stole his body. So we see that there are seasons. You can actually discern seasons where you know you are liable to attacks. Except you do not have spiritual intelligence. Now, Satan, I'm using this, are, are we getting blessed? Is God speaking to us? Satan is not omniscient. There are three attributes that make God sovereign. Number one is his omnipresence. His ability to be everywhere. Satan is not everywhere. Job 1 verse 1. From whence comest thou? Later on you read, from running to and fro. God doesn't run to and fro. His eyes can see everything. The all-seeing eyes of God. Are we together now? Number two, his omniscience his ability to know all things satan does not know all things he works with informations that's why he uses human agents to probe into people that's why satan pursued prophets because he wanted to hear what god was telling them are we together now very important and then number three his omnipotence his ability to have all power once have i spoken twice have we heard that all power belongs to the lord now, Satan does not have these attributes. Are we together? So, Satan can discern seasons of breakthrough in your life. And that season is usually communicated in the spirit by unusual angelic activities. Satan was once a cherub. And so, he understands. Remember when Jacob slept, right? When you read Genesis 28. When Jacob slept, he saw a ladder. There were unusual activities happening. Are we together now? The same thing Jesus told Nathaniel. In John chapter 1, he said, you will see many things. you see the heavens open and all of that. So what happens is that at a point where the devil sees that there are unusual activities or prophecy has revealed what God is about to do. That's why when prophecy comes, that's not the time to cross your leg. Paul spoke to his son Timothy. He said, this charge I give unto you, my son Timothy, that you wore a good warfare with the prophecies. Because prophecy is an announcement. It's an unveiling. The moment the voice of God prophetically spoke, John said, behold the lamb. And a voice said, this is my beloved son. Satan started chasing him. Are we together now? So when there is an attack, it usually is that God is, is trying to do something in your life and Satan is trying to raise a counter-attack. At that point, if you understand the mysteries of the kingdom, there is a secret to tap into a higher supply of grace. Are you following me now? And that's the power of a retreat. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. They that wait. The moment you sense that there is a lot of boisterous activities in your life, and you will know it 
by the intuition of the spirit. Some of you will see it in dreams. Some of you will have it in visions. Some of you prophecies will come to you. And many of us who are used to rejecting prophecy. Now, prophecy must not be exalted above the word of God. However, it's important to many times pay attention to it. Especially when it's coming from vessels that know God and are credible. It's important to pay attention. Praise the Lord. Very, very important. So, when there is an attack and it is a demonic attack, if it prevails over you, an attack is inevitable on the saints. And it's not a surprising thing. The surprise, however, is when Satan prevails. Are we together now? Because even in heaven, there was war. The Bible said there was war in heaven. That, that dragon, Lucifer, he rose. An archangel, Michael, also rose. But Satan prevailed not. There was no place found for him and he was casted to the earth. And there was a lamentation. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth. You know, Satan, that old serpent, he has come with anger and great fury. Are we together now? So if there is an attack, an affliction, the secret is prayer. And it's in a secret place. So if your prayer life died, it's because you did not build momentum before that time. Are we together? That's the reason why it is important for every believer to have what we call, it's like a spiritual bank. It's like an energy bank. So your daily prayer, the Bible says redeeming the time. That's the mystery. There are two words that are used time in the Greek. There is chronos and there is kairos. Chronos is the passage of time. Kairos is an opportune time or a set time. The Bible uses these two words in the book of Psalms. It said, thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time, chronos, to favor her. Yea, the kairos. When you translate it to Hebrew, the set time. Are we together now? So, there is a set time, an opportune time, where major things happen between heaven. There is serious business between you and heaven. And at that time, the devil knows and he will launch attacks. So, what you do is you build a spiritual fortification. Both spiritual intelligence and capacity in the place of prayer. So that at such time, it will sustain you. The Bible says, if you turn aside in the day of battle, what was wrong? Your strength, your spiritual strength now is small. So if you fell in that attack, it's because your strength was small. Are we together? Let's assume, let's use something, maybe pornography. Are we together now? And it's something God had delivered you from. And you sense that the devil is trying to drive you again into porn, uh, pornography. Pornography. Are we together now? And then you fell to it. That falling is not a test. That falling is not the furnace of affliction we are talking about. That you fell simply because your spirit did not sustain the strength and the energy to scale through. But then in the midst of it, the dimension of God's love called mercy comes in. So don't confuse it that because you learned more from that situation, it means it was God that orchestrated it. God simply took advantage of it and allowed his mercy to prevail so that in your rising, you will now rise better, stronger, and more anointed. This is what makes God love. Are you getting it now? But that does not mean God intended for you to necessarily fall. The falling is simply the limitation of your spirit, man. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Yes. Sorry, uh, this is... There are many people, if yeah. you ask two, two questions, please, if you come out... After two questions, you will go and sit down and hope that somebody will ask your question. Are we together? Yeah, um, this has been happening. I will see some things. I, won't, I will not know how to inquire for the meaning. And when it happens later, sometimes they are not good. At times, it posi it's positive. You will what? Sorry. See, for instance. You will see things, yeah, yeah, visions now. Yes. Now, like there was a time I saw myself traveling with a lady. And when it came, I didn't understand what it meant. When it came. You were traveling with a lady. Uh, to, a, a vision. To, to a place, yes. When it to came. Where? To a place I didn't know we were going okay, to a place. Okay, no so location. The, okay. the reality was that the person was under attack, and I was the one to lead her to the prayer place. I, I, I just, and that, that oh, was you held she, her and you were taking her yeah, to a place. Okay, that's where she got her this thing. But I didn't understand the meaning then. Now recently, I saw a, a lady, my classmate, um, pick a bag and was traveling. I didn't know what it meant. The next day, uh, she actually told me she was tra she was traveling to a place. I said, "What for?" She said, "Somebody just died there." Now, I understood that uh, maybe if we, were, if we had prayed 
about the journey and all of that if it was a bad one so how does one my question is how would one be um, how would one know the meaning of the pictures you are seeing at the time of the vision to help your direction in prayers okay god bless you now there are two things here that our attempt to respond to I, I don't know if we understand his question but um after this we'll take three people from outside before we continue so protocol help us we'll get the three people from outside who have questions please you see how time is going if you come and you ask a question that doesn't make sense we have agreed as a congregation that we're sending you back please we intend to grow and we want to redeem the time are we together so please before you come make sure you are prepared not to disgrace yourself are we together ask questions seek counsel with your neighbor whether your question is constructive enough yes yes please please so that you don't you don't come out here and and waste our time but the gentleman was saying something that i consider to be important now i think the biggest error in the prophetic is lack of spiritual growth to contend for accurate interpretation the problem with the prophetic or visionary encounters usually three of us can see the same thing in the spirit but it does not mean the same for all three of us are we together now that's the problem i have with books that say if you see a chain it means oppression what if it's a chain watch that i saw what if it's a, a necklace to mean an ornament of royalty you can't just say i saw a chain it means i'm under attack I remember a lady years ago who was pressing into God. And when she got to that dimension, she, she, a, another lady had a dream about her and saw her naked. And came and met her and started lambasting her and said, you are walking in immorality. What kind of nonsense life is this? You are giving us an impression like you are serious with God. Now your secret has been revealed. And the lady was depressed and she came and met me. That, that nakedness was a message in the spirit that she was becoming intimate with the spirit but it was wrongly interpreted three of us can see a finger in the spirit for one it means warning stop what you are doing for another man, one it means direction come up here are we together for another it means i am blessing the works of your hands we all saw the same thing so it is wrong remember in the interpretation of the dream of 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 joseph and the wine presser and baker all of them saw three three things three basket three this he interpreted for the first one and he was happy then the other one said me too i have my own he said in three days they will hang you and this is established and they hung him after three days are we together so stop going around with predefined prophetic interpretations you only make certain prophetic interpretations predefined if the character of their operation has been established in the world. For instance, anywhere you see a dove is a representation of the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. Anywhere. It's a spiritual symbol that the Spirit of God has associated himself with. Except if you see a dove and you see it oscillating, that's, a, that's deception, for instance. Because according to the scriptures, the enemy can parade himself as an angel of light. Are we together now? So, it is true that there are certain default symbols that help us communicate with visionary encounters. But not just that you see, you can see a woman in the spirit. You can see yourself moving with a woman. And you may think that God is punishing you from lo or lost. A woman in the spirit is a gate. That woman you are seeing could be that you are entering a new season. Are you seeing now? But because you do not sustain that spiritual intelligence, you go around casting something you should be prophesying to come. And, and all of that. So I think um, for the gentleman, I think I've been able to help him. I, I hope that I got his question correctly. If I didn't, I'm, I'm so sorry. Praise God. Yes, my dear. Praise God. Permit me to say this that first. That is an honor to finally meeting you after listening to your message for a very long time. God bless you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I, I'm very Thank happy you. I'm here tonight. You're My welcome. question is to Bawash it too. The first question is, what do you do as a person when you're struggling with spiritual good? Today you are hope, tomorrow you are Spiritual you're growth. Uh, does Watch. it mean that um, it's like a graph that you'll be going zigzag, zigzag till you get to that final slope? Uh, or okay. is it that you question just... Two. The second question is, you're talking about dream and vision. In my lodge, 
we had a case where someone said he had a dream, blah, 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 blah. And it's really caused a big advoct in my lodge. Look at the congregation. Okay. It's, it's really caused a big advoct in my lodge. I'm asking the question that doesn't He had a mean dream about the lodge or something. About the sister, that the sister came to seduce him, blah, blah, blah. And everybody was now calling the sister a witch. That as, does it mean that all dreams come from God? Okay. When we see dreams, does it mean that everything is, we see, it is coming from God? Okay. Thank you very much. God bless you, my dear. Um, her first question was, sometimes they should not go immediately so that they can remind me in case I've lost, um, I'm interpreting them with my spirit, so my mind is hardly here. Um, her first question was what? <laughs> up, up and down. Okay, okay, listen, listen, listen. Listen, please. What does the Bible say? The path of the just is like a shining light that does what? shines brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. Now, there is a difference between spiritual fatigue and backsliding. I think I've, I've, cleared, I've cleared that. Alright? For as long as you are wearing this body, the limitations of carrying up mortality, right? The concept of immortality is a concept that is accessible. But immortality is not an impartation. Immortality is the resultant effect of accessing light from the spirit. Because the Bible says, as we behold him, we are changed. Now, the problem usually is that our lifetime and our level of regeneration is so slow that our lifetime will not be able to help us change that fast. That's why we die. Are we together now? But it is possible that a man can contend for that dimension. Enoch did it. Elijah did it. So we know that it's possible to live bodily, although in a glorified form, out of this earth. Moses didn't do it um, and all of that, but at least we have two witnesses, two evidences in the Bible that they were able to access that. So when you find yourself, see, and, and this is, her question is very instrumental to your spiritual health. If you are sick and you don't know, how many of you have seen people in the village who are sick, they don't even know? To them, they are healthy. You just test them and say, Mr. Man, you have malaria plus plus. And yet, the person is playing football. You not, now tell the person, go to the hospital. That's how many people are spiritually. And for me, your spiritual life is tested based on your passion for God. There are certain things that start happening in your life that you know there is danger. Number one, your prayer life. Your, when your prayer life is, is nose diving, don't ever pretend that it's a dimension of growth. You are backsliding immediately once your prayer life is going down don't let satan fool you and say you are just in a season where uh, god doesn't want you to say anything or this and that and that be very careful because it could be deception to destroy you your spiritual life number two your passion for the word number three your passion for the house of god number four i want to call it your your sense of morality is important if all of a sudden i sit down and I find out that I start lusting after you. Call me apostle, call me whatever. I'm lusting after you. I came for Koinonia, I saw you. Abel is preaching, Cain is there, disturbing his mind. What do you think I'll do? It will be stupid for me to wear suit again and come back. I will use the week to flog out that element of the flesh that is growing. Many of us ignore those promptings until it grows to a point where it backfires obviously. That's when we start crashing in. The moment, see, the Bible says, let sin have no place. Don't give the devil a foothold. The moment you find out that there is a place, there, is, there are certain things you are bending on your values. You don't pray for three days or four days. You feel all right. Very, very all right. You carry your Bible and there is no zeal to read. Sometimes it could be in the presence of God, you'll be able to find out whether it's spiritual fatigue or it is backsliding. Are we together? But ultimately, the difference between spiritual fatigue and backsliding is that under spiritual fatigue, your passion is still there. It's just the zeal and the strength to press to that is not there. But under backsliding, your zeal and your passion dies. Are, are we together now? For the, our brother that saw a vision that a lady is seducing him, um, that's, that's wrong. You see, this, this is the problem we have when we live in Christian communities because people wake up with all kinds of things. I spoke to you about interpretation. 
this brother may be a sincere person. Maybe he's here. We are not creating fight. Are, you, are we together? You don't know whether he followed you for Koinonia. You said he's in your lodge. Now, the point is this. It is wrong. You see, prophecy and in the realm of, and the, realm of the spirit also depends on your mental renewal for correct interpretation. Are we together? I can guarantee you that this brother's spiritual paradigm fundamentally is faulty. For him to see an innocent lady and call her a witch to say, is he the only person in the lodge? You'll be surprised it's not even maybe the most handsome or something. So, um, it's, it's a wrong paradigm. Now, you point, do you know another thing? It is possible that I can go to bed and see Shal Homer chasing me maybe with a stick in a dream are we together now and all of a sudden i wake up and i say i saw shahoma chasing me and it's welfare that cooks for me i put two and two together and i say my life is under i'm in danger i mean and then i now dissolve koinonia welfare because they are trying to destroy apostle joshua selman some of you you have that paradigm now it can happen a possibility exists that such kinds of things happen. I mean, in the house of God, there are all kinds of things. But then I'm saying that your interpretation primarily should not be that because he saw a lady. If he does not understand, seek counsel. There are, there are spiritual puzzles that we put together. You must let scripture interpret your encounters. Are we together now? I mean, in the Bible, women seduce men. What was the progression of the seduction? Samson was seduced. Are we together? Who again was seduced in the Bible? Huh? Job was not seduced. Who? Joseph was seduced. Some of you are saying, Job, look at how your poor Bible, please, how about this is Koinonia, don't, we are Bible people. How, Job was never seduced. The only woman with him was his wife. Please, don't go and say that anywhere. It's very bad. Are, are we together now, my dear? So, that, that, that teaching, even if it was true, this is what I would have done. If I had a dream and you pursue me, or you are trying to sleep with me or something in a dream, right? Even if it was your face, it's wrong to get up and call you a witch. Do you know, because you don't know what spiritual challenges she's facing, you now get up and you now call her a witch. Three situations would help to interpret that. Number one, it could be that there is a spiritual operation around your life and your family that births seduction. It can be true. Are we together? That you as a person, you are not bad, but it's possible that you are being influenced by the spirit of lust or because of the background you are coming from. And so it will happen in the similitude of your face, disturbing that person. Are we together now? And so you will feel bad. Number two, it can be the spirit of confusion. The devil masquerading to now cause confusion are we together so he will now use your face just like you saw your father quarreling you you saw your mother caught beating you you just got up and said your mother is a witch anybody whether my father my mother the, the woman is innocent you find out that we keep calling people witches and wizards who have no business with witchcraft however 80 percent of them are being influenced by spirits that operate in the character of what they were accused of you see that so um whoever he called a witch i can guarantee you is not a witch please she left her father's house to also come and do nyc she's not a witch she may not be spiritually strong and all of that but she's not a witch it may be wrong so go and comfort her the brother what he saw when you have encounters you are not guaranteed to have interpretation for them but one thing you can do is blast in tongues sufficiently until your spirit man gives you a note of peace. At that point, you know that whatever is the issue, whether calling it forth or driving it away, it has been settled. It is for that cause the spirit of God makes intercession for us. I cannot tell you that every encounter I've had, I've had interpretation for. In fact, some of them may be years in the future. As I grow spiritually, or I have other encounters that piece them up together, I now see the message. But in the interim, every time you wake up from an encounter, praying in the spirit is the way forward. And you pray until there is that check in your spirit that whatever it is, it's been settled. 
You understand? So that's what you should do. God bless you and increase you. Eh? Okay, yes, straight sir. to the point. Um, we have, okay. Let's have one or two more people. Two more people. Please, if you are sure your question is really going to bless us, we have a little time and do, please and please don't ask anything here that will waste our time. Are we together? The gentleman, uh, if your questions will be fast, I can listen to it and combine it. That gentleman, there's a lady in the background. You, sister, the one waving your hands, come. Um, have we had anybody outside? Okay, there's one person outside. Okay, one usher, come. You're a worker, we love you, come. Okay, so quickly. Good evening, sir. It's so a process whereby... Don't look at me. As you're saying, look at the congregation. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes. In the process whereby someone is suffering from the lust of the flesh. Lust of the flesh. Yes. Example, what is lust of the flesh? For Immorality. example, masturbation. Okay. Or lesbianism. And you are praying. Praying in tongues. Pray. You are in the process of prayers. And you are still having the feelings. In the process of praying, you, know, you are still struggling and struggling. You are trying to pray. The spirit is just trying and trying. So, sir, what do you What's do? the way forward? God bless you. Thank you. He's been very sincere. Look, let me tell you the truth. The goal of this question and answer session is to help us grow spiritually. There's nothing embarrassing about it. Praise God. There are people like that. In fact, I've seen people who are suffering from immorality or loss and they're on three days dry. On the third day, before they break with food, are we together now? The devil does some kind of things, positions, the same lady they used to sleep with and it happens again or internet pornography or whatever we've seen these kinds of cases so um do you know what deliverance is deliverance is not just coughing out things and rolling around and pushing chairs and bringing people here deliverance is the spiritual mechanism with which a man is separated from a spirit or an influence over his life are we together now? There are three dimensions or three levels that access Satan in a man's life. Number one is called covenants. Covenants. It is usually the strongest of the three. Number two is disobedience or ignorance. Number two is ignorance. Then number three is disobedience. Now, the danger of covenant and ties is that your personal salvation does not take away the covenant that is in a territory. Are we together now? That is the reason why someone can be born again. There are still corrupt people in Nigeria. But are you corrupt? No. Are we together now? Nigeria is termed a corrupt nation. Yet there are righteous people who are true. Are we together now? The earth is the Lord. Yet they are still bombing children and disturbing people. So there are covenants. A covenant is a legal agreement between spirit entities and human beings or fellow human beings right that either opens up access for good or of evil covenants have consequences right they can they can they can transcend generations so this is very important that's why you find out that the classic sign of covenants is that there must be a pattern to it the moment there is a covenant involved in any process there is a pattern if these three guys are brothers and you find out that Michael is very rich. Kenny is very rich. Promise is very rich. You see that pattern. There is a covenant that grant that access. Promise, very poor. Kenny, very poor. Michael, struggling. There is also a pattern. So patterns are usually communications that the access point for the realm of the spirit in that situation is a covenant. So you find out that a father is an armed robber. When he stole, his son did not know. Many years later, the son will also come and steal. Have you seen people like that? The same pattern that happened to their parents repeats themselves. Because the patterns are a spiritual formula. There is an enchantment like a spell that makes it happen. I know a lady who, who I, I, I think um, um, she got pregnant. And the person who got her pregnant, I think was a man of God. Same thing happened to her mother. Same thing happened to her grandmother. One reverend in their village got the grandmother pregnant. Many years later, one, one evangelist or something got the mother pregnant. And then now, one brother in a fellowship gets the lady pregnant. Now, that brother does not know the reverend that got, uh, uh, um, 
grandma pregnant that time when she was young but then the truth remains that there is a pattern are, are we together are you getting it now and i know that sometimes many of us are preached into believing they don't exist and we try to explain them away but the truth is is there it can be dealt with potentially the birth of jesus gives us access to victory in this thing but there is the experience of establishing that victory are we together number two is ignorance 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 grants access to demon spirits they manipulate on the ignorance of men and open them up to certain tragic manifestations then number three is disobedience you know it but your capacity to walk thereof in that obedience is not there so these are the three access points so if you find out that you are praying praying and fasting about the issue of lust or immorality or any entanglement and it's repeating itself you need help that's the reason why god puts um gifts to the body to be able to help right remember our teaching for this cause many are weak many are sick and many do sleep god has elected certain people in the body of christ and created platforms that can be able to help people deal with these things that's why we organize miracle services that's why we organize um, um all kinds of meetings that's why when we come to god's presence like this we take our time to soak in the glory so that the presence and the power of god can come and then address some of these things so for that brother you may need help seek help look for an anointed man of god not just a counselor somebody with an anointing that has been demonstrated to produce results and it can help you praise god praise the lord my name is luke my name is luke he's talking about the presence of god okay i heard of your message you preach about doers of the world okay and you mentioned i forgot the man name but you say pursue of the presence when we pursue how do one pursues the presence of god and how do we abide in that presence of God, like in Psalm 91 verse 1, when it says, He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High. Sometimes I may get interpretation of that verse, but sometimes the interpretation does not suit me. So I'm asking, that how do one, what, do, what are the criteria for one to dwell in the presence of God and remain constant in the presence of God? Okay. There are parameters. Number one, you must consistently create an atmosphere. You see, I preached a message years ago called the law of atmosphere everything thrives based on the atmosphere created the presence of god requires an atmosphere the presence of god is invoked just like you invoke spirits there is an atmosphere that allows the presence of god to be made manifest are we together now worship is one key that opens up the presence of god your passion your love towards god in other words you're prioritizing him making him your one and only and ultimate is one way to get the presence of God. Obedience in scripture. He that keepeth my commands. John um, um, 16, 21. I think I'm right. Or 14, 21. He that keepeth my commands. He it is that loves me. And I will love him and my father will love him. And we will come and manifest ourselves to him. So the love of God is very, very important. Yes, my dear. Praise God. I'm precious, Moses. Um... I want to ask her, uh, um, there's this friend of mine that I was preaching to, and um, she was telling me that there's no heaven, that we are going to stay here. There's no there's, heaven? Yes, and there's no hell. Uh, okay. So, now we're getting into I've, denominational. And, okay. Um, she was not, I was not telling her there is the no story heaven. of uh, Lazarus and the rich man. I now asked her that, okay, where did Lazarus went to, and where was the rich man? Then she asked me to open to Revelation 21 verse 1 and after much argument she was now asking me that in Revelation 21, 21 he said and I saw a new heaven and coming new down earth. ahead and you know, she was now asking me that okay where is that new heaven and the new earth and I didn't know what to really tell I just kept quiet I was confused in that aspect God bless you um, I don't know if it's the millennial reign of Christ or... I understand. I don't really... You see, we labor day and night uh, contributing our quota to help believers become matured. Are we together? You make people become matured by giving them understanding. Now, before I answer, 
I, I don't mean in any way. I know that there are different denominations, different Christian sects with their understandings about heaven and all of that. And um, I'm not giving you a denominational opinion. Are we together now? There are many instances in scripture that lets us know that there is heaven. Are we together now? Very, very important. I, I think that um, it doesn't make sense to begin to make all those arguments. Genesis 1 verse 1. The very first verse in the Bible. In the beginning, God created what? And the earth. Now, I think that alone answers. First verse, first chapter in the whole Bible. In the beginning, God created. So, don't say where is it. Created, God created the heavens. And notice he never said the heaven. Heavens, different planes. Paul himself gave us an example. He said he was caught up to the third heaven. That means there are other dimensions. The psalmist said the heaven of heavens belongs to the Lord. So we know that there are different planes, but there is heaven. Hallelujah. Are we together now? The Bible says every good and perfect gift comes from above. Not just the sky. Are we together now? Acts chapter 1, when Jesus was about to be taken, when he lifted to heaven, two angels appeared and told the people, men and brethren, why look ye? You know, this and that and that. He said, this same Jesus. Is it not there? Acts chapter 1. Let's use it to answer. At least let's use the words of Jesus. Acts chapter 1, verse 1. Jesus is going to heaven now. And he's speaking to us. Or the angels are responding. Acts chapter 1. I, I don't want to quote it wrongly. Verse, verse 10. Verse 10. I know that when you read from verse 9. Let's start from verse 9. It gives us an impression like he just vanished. He did not just vanish. A cloud received him. A cloud received him. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. Verse 10, please, quickly. And while they looked steadfastly towards where? Heaven. As he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. Verse, verse 11. Which he also said, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you, into where? Into where? So we know that heaven is the habitation. The heaven of heavens is where Jesus himself lives. There is a place, a spiritual location called heaven. It says, shall also come in like manner as ye have seen him go into where? Heaven. Are we together? So that issue of saying um, there is no heaven is not true. Please, the Bible does not negate that. The fact that there is heaven. The Bible clearly tells us in many instances, Old and New Testament, that there is heaven. Jesus himself, I want to give you the ultimate proof now. Jesus himself made us to know that there is heaven. In Matthew chapter 6, when he was teaching us how to pray, he said, our father... Who art where? He didn't say our father who art around. Our father who art in an exact location, heaven. From that point, we hallow your name. Your kingdom come. So please, let's rest this issue once and for all. There is a real place called heaven. And, and um, there are people there right now. Are we together? And we hope that one day we'll join them. Now, what we need to explain is the fact that the Bible says the old heaven and the old earth will be rolled away like a curtain and then a new heaven and a new earth will come it is true that that very habitation of god will eventually be transported back to this realm but it won't be in the similitude of these three dimensions so it's not like we're going to have another three-dimensional realm no there will be another atmosphere that comes to occupy this space this is the sovereignty of god this is part of the mysteries of the kingdom where this old heaven and old earth will be rolled away to, frankly speaking, we don't know. The Bible does not reveal that. Uh, this is part of the information that is contained in the age to come. Are we together now? That's why there are ages to come that carry certain informations that are important for the saints. So there is heaven, my dear. And every time you preach to people and they argue with you, don't turn your evangelism into debate politely decline you may look foolish don't say no i can't let this go like this 
let it go like that so that God will be glorified. Yes, my dear. Praise the Lord. My name is Christiana Kadri. Thank you. My question is, sir, like somebody prophesied to you, you're going to marry a man of God, and you have been waiting. <laughs> okay. Many ladies are happy. Okay, let, let's get the question, please. And Someone prophesied to you. And nobody. And said you will marry a pastor yes. and you have been waiting. And the person has been waiting because one miracle service, I saw you, sir, you prophesied to one lady that she's going to marry a pastor. And one day again, I'm listening to one man of God. He was saying, anybody that prophesied, if he's a man of God, that the thing did not happen, continue waiting. Even when you die waiting, continue waiting. So, <laughs> I'm asking that. When somebody prophesied to you, you're going to marry a pastor, and the pastor is not coming, you continue waiting on what okay. to do. That's a very good question, I think. We can use it. It's not just prophesying about marriage. It could be about anything. Praise the Lord. Now, um, I, I understand what she's saying, and she's communicating probably the pain of a lot of people. Because over time, women of God have spoken to people, and there are times that for others, the prophecy have even come with precise detail. You are going to marry a man called uh, Ebenezer. He's in media department. The day you will see him is wearing a white cloth, dark trouser, he's holding a camera. If he snaps you, just know. <laughs> now, come Ebenezer. Now, Ebenezer. Come now, Ebenezer. Now, Ebenezer, you now come for Koinonia. And Ebenezer is just snapping around and focuses on you. And your heart is beating. It's true. Ebenezer snaps you and goes to marry somebody else. Are we together now? And now you are waiting and you are frustrated. Now, there are three things here I want to explain. I know we have all laughed, but let's listen closely now. The Bible says that even the ministration of the gifts must be done according to the measure of grace. Are we together? Two of us can be prophets, but the grace, the access to authority and strength, the spiritual ranking that authorizes us in the dispensing is like you have two doctors. One is just doing his housemanship, another one is doing, another one is a consultant. They are all called doctors, but are they the same? They are not the same at all. Are we together now? This is how it is spiritually. So, when, we, when there is the ministration of the word, notice sometimes when you see me wanting to talk to people, I call people out by the spirit and I just keep quiet. Because of what the Lord is communicating to me, sometimes it's like a feedback mechanism. I'm checking in my spirit to make sure that this is not an interplay of the flesh and to also make sure if God wants me to reveal it to them. Sometimes you see me and I talk to people. I take away the mic because the information is very sensitive and may, is something that can be embarrassing. Are we together now? But let me tell you sincerely. Let me tell you this sincerely. One thing I know about marriage, and we have discussed that, make reference to my message, um, challenging discussions on late marriage. I think we touched that area where the issue of God said overrides the word of God. The Bible tells us, Hebrews chapter 1, God who in sundry times and diverse manners spake to us through the prophets has in this last day spoken to us through his son which he has appointed to be heir over all things. And we know that that son is the living logos, the word of God. And so whether it is Joshua Selman, I'm not telling you to doubt the word. By the grace of God, we press into the word of God to make sure that we bring accurate words. And there is a track record. You can follow up the things that have been prophesied over people. Some of them have come to pass. Some of them are already on the way. Praise the Lord. Now, um, no matter what it is, if a man of God gives you a prophetic word, and after a season, you do not, for instance, let's use marriage. I prophesy to this lady now, and I tell her, a pastor is coming. And Michael comes to her. And let's assume Michael is just a businessman. You know that the natural tendency is for her to drive him away. And say, please, you are not a pastor. Um, he may be a pastor when he marries her. God didn't lie. 
Are we together? But sometimes it can also be that there is need for a check. In fact, sincerely speaking, let me tell you, it is very, it is very praiseworthy to go back to God again. We have seen instances in the Bible where God spoke and under certain circumstances, he had to speak new things again. Are we together? An example is Isaiah 38, when he spoke to Isaiah to speak to Hezekiah. Remember that scripture? He came and told him, Hezekiah, put your house in order. You will not recover from this sickness. You are going to die. Are we Bible students? So when I, Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and invoked the mercy of God, God sent Isaiah again. Are we together? To go back. So there is a possibility. It's not a doctrine. But through scripture we see that there is a possibility. Um, the alignment of man can make God say new things. I'll give you an instance. If this lady is your wife. I will um, Example, example. If this lady is your wife. I'm not showing you your wife. If this lady is your wife. Of, of course, let me just put a, a little word of blessing. We are proud of our ladies. And if I say it and God is, 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 is directing you there, there's nothing wrong. Ladies, you should give me a happy meal tomorrow. <laughs> Are we together? But now this is the example. If this is your wife, truly, truly, and she says, I'm not doing, do you think God is going to yoke you and tell you you will not marry any, anybody again because of her carelessness and disobedience? Are we together now? God will not put you to ransom. The same way if God calls you into ministry and you say no, will he force you? Will he kill you? The same way he, he tells you that you should surrender all to him. When you refuse, he will not force you. There's hellfire already to settle that issue. So he will not force you. Please, I want us to understand that the plans of God can change. It's his purposes that are eternal. This is a revelation that will deliver many of us right now. The plans of God can change. God planned that you fly Ari to Lagos. And something happens. God will tell you to enter if it's in a cheap transport. The plans have changed. But the destination is still Lagos. But when you sit down and say it must be Arik or it must be flight. Are we together now? In scripture again and again. For instance, do you know it was never God's desire for men to have earthly kings rule over them? When you read in the Bible, it was his desire that he remains their king. But the people out of anger and rebellion they say give us a king and god had to make prophet samuel to go and anoint saul the son of kish to become a king are we together now yes it was never even god's desire listen it was never god's desire for david for the tribe of david to be the lineage with which jesus will come it was supposed to be saul are we together but Saul made a costly mistake that costed him that opportunity. Remember when he went and he was off, um, giving the offering by himself. They asked him to wait for the coming of the prophet. But he could not wait because the people were murmuring. And being a king, he was not a priest. Are we together? Because in ancient times, there were kings, priests, and prophets. They operated in different dimensions. Occasionally, the priests were also the prophets, like we have in the case of Samuel. He was both a priest and a prophet. Are we together now? And so in that incidence, um, Saul now start, he made sacrifices. And while he finished, Samuel just came. And Samuel told him, you have done foolishly. He said, if you had waited for me to come and offer the sacrifice, God would have established your throne forever. So it would not be the lion of the tribe of, or, or the, the root of David. It would now be the root of Saul. Again, we see that the first person God called in the Bible was not Abraham. The first person God called in the Bible was his father, Terah. Terah was tired and he said, I'm not doing. And then God looked for Abraham. Are we together now? So that's very, very important. I think that um, we need to understand this. My, my dear, if, even if it's me that prophesied to you and you are tired, come and meet me. Come for counseling. And say, let's, let's hear God. Let's pray about this issue again. Especially where there is a God-fearing 
very serious and responsible brother who is ready to marry and is coming around you. You are hanging the person while waiting for the pastor to see if the pastor will come or not. Don't dilly dial. Find the man of God. If the person who prophesied to you is still within reach, find him. If you discern pride and arrogance in him that he's embarrassed to recheck whether his hearing was correct, go and look for another man of God to speak to you. Are we together now? I know there's a lady who came one time, I think from Port Harcourt, coming to confirm because a man of God described somebody, a fair person, and she had been waiting. And there was somebody who really loved God. When she came, I prayed for her and I said, I, I wish you a happy married life. And they are married now, happily married to the glory of God. She would have been waiting forever for, for a, a yellow person to appear. So, praise the Lord. Let's celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. You see, all these questions we have attempted reveal three things. Number one, it is costly to be ignorant over spiritual things. Are we together? It is costly. Just a little question and answer session, but it has exposed us to a lot of things. It is costly. I trust that with this little question and answer session, it has activated our appetite for more of God. You see, if you do not understand scripture, you will be deceived in many ways. You notice that every question I attempt to answer, I show you a scripture to support it because you cannot afford to answer questions with opinions and you will not know God's opinion if you don't study. Study. Study to show yourself, the Bible says, study to show yourself approved. A workman that needed not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word. Praise the Lord. Psalms 82 from verse 5 says, They know not, neither will they understand. He said they grow up in darkness and the earth is out of course. So it is important for us to be good students of the word. Not religiously studying it, but studying it with everything that we have. Hallelujah. Number two, corporate fellowship is very important. It's part of the principles and the requirement for your spiritual growth. You can see that a platform like this has afforded us an opportunity to know more and to learn a few things to strengthen our spiritual life. Psalm 133, how good and pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity. It is like the oil that comes from the head of Aaron, right? Down to his bird and to his cat and all of that. He said, dear, God had commanded the blessing. So it's very important. Corporate fellowship is important for our spiritual strengthening. Hallelujah. And then number three, ultimately, it reveals to us the necessity of the person of the Holy Spirit. Worship team sang the song beautifully. We're going to sing that song again. And, and then we'll sing that song that came. I can't even remember what we sang, but try to remember it, worship team. We'll sing those two songs again very beautifully. The Holy Spirit. This place is called Koinonia. It's our intimacy with him and our partnership with him that affords us the opportunity to access light and access his wisdom. The Bible says, ride prosperously because of truth. Right? You will only prevail by the truth you know, not the truth that is available. The truth you know. It can be available, but if you do not know it, you will still die. There are still people going to hell Whereas the price for our sin has been paid for. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. Um, just a few minutes and we'll be done. We are going to pray and ask the Lord very passionately. Very passionately to open up our spirits. To open up our spirits. Very, very important. While seated, just pray. We are going to stand up, but then I want us to pray while seated and talk to the Lord. Some of us have seen... This situation has revealed to some of us how clueless we are over spiritual things. If you were to be asked some of these questions, many of us see that this is like a, a test. Those outside, make sure you are praying at the back there, outside at the window. Make sure you are participating in the prayer. The Lord is with you right where you are. Make sure you are praying and say, Lord, please deliver me from spiritual ignorance. Deliver me from ignorance. Grant me access to the word. Grant me access to the word. 
deliver me from spiritual ignorance Lord I want to be furnished grounded in the truth the Bible says that he gave unto some apostles and prophets and, and evangelists and pastors and teachers it says for the equipping of the saints the equipping of the saints that they the saints now equipped will do the work of the ministry to the end that we all will come into the fullness of the the, the measure of the stature of Christ not being tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine lift your voice and pray and say Lord in this time and age in these end times where there is a lot of error there is a lot of confusion I pray that I be delivered from spiritual ignorance lift your voice and pray deliver me oh God from ignorance open my eyes to access light in the spirit deliver me oh God from spiritual ignorance Pray. Make sure you are praying. Deliver me, O oh God, from spiritual ignorance. It's dangerous in these days not to lack the knowledge that you need. Number two, Lord, align my spirit in a way that I'll begin to touch realities in the realm of the spirit. Lift your voice and pray. Let there be a programming in my spirit. Let there be an alignment in my spirit, man. Have your way. I'm tired of wrong interpretation. I'm tired of interpreting spiritual realities in a wrong way. I'm tired of reading my Bible and not accessing the light and the power that I need. Pray. Align my spirit. I cry for an alignment upon my spirit, man. Have your way. Have your way. please rise as we pray this very prayer point is important oh god if ever you need a vessel find one in me lift your voice and pray use me oh god many of us have stopped praying that prayer use me for your glory lift your voice and pray lord use me use me use me i may not be a man of god but make me a mighty vessel in your hand Oh yes, have your way in my life. Have your way in my life. 
use me for your glory as an agent of deliverance as an agent of transformation as an agent of healings miracles signs wonders use me in the prophetic oh god use me in the apostolic oh god use me in the healing ministry take your place take your place take your place Take your place. Take your place. Take your place. Holy God. Have your way. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.